What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at Elite Code Problem number 1783 Grand Slam titles. Mark this medium. Let's get into it. So this one's great for all tennis players out there since it's about how many Grand Slam titles have been won by which player. So we have a table called Players which contains a player ID and a player name. We have a table called Championships which contains all Grand Slam tournaments and the year they took place in. So we have a year, Wimbledon, French Open, US Open, Australian Open, and in these tournament fields, it's actually the player ID of the winner. So we know which person won which tournament in which year. Our task is to write an SQL query to report the number of Grand Slam tournaments won by each player. Do not include the players who did not win any tournament. We can return the result table in any order and it should look something like this. We have a player ID, player name, and the count of Grand Slams they won. So we have 5 for Federer and 7 for Nadal. We have none for Novak, which is why he's not on the table. So let's get into coding that up. So let's see what we have in our input table. So we have three players, different player ID, and in championships we have three entries for 2018, 2019, and 2020. Now what's difficult about this problem I would say is that we have this information in columns. So we have one column for Wimbledon, one for French Open, US Open, and Australian Open. And we do have to make a match and join players and championships. That should be clear to get the player name and also player ID and the Grand Slams count. And since players who didn't win anything shouldn't show up in the results, we can use a regular join. Left join would allow us to look at players who didn't win anything and didn't show up in that other table. So we're going to use a regular join between, let's select star as a placeholder, and we're selecting from players inner joining, so just join championships. And we're joining on player ID. And as I said, player ID is what's used in these tournament columns to denote who actually won the tournament. So if we have a one in the Wimbledon column in 2018, that means player ID one, which is Nadal, won in one Wimbledon in that year. And that means we're using player ID to join feels like Wimbledon. Okay, now what I want to achieve is make matches for when a player won any of these tournaments because I want to look at that row for 2018 for, uh, for Nadal just because he won Wimbledon. Even though he won all other tournaments, I would still want to look at that row even if he didn't win anything else. So if it's the case that he won at least one of these, I want that row and I want that information. So I'm going to say if that player won Wimbledon or that player won French Open or that player won Australia or US Open or Australian Open, I want to make that match. So I'm using or here to connect all of these. Could copy that, but I'm just writing it out. And that should allow me to get all rows for whenever they won one of these tournaments. Now, let's just run that. Novak or player day three is still not going to show up since that player didn't win anything in these years. But we have matches for Nadal and Federer. Now, if you were to count up the amount of rows in here for each player, say Nadal, we would get one, two, three rows, but Nadal actually won seven Grand Slam titles. And that's where it becomes difficult, and that's why it's difficult to have this in columns. So now we need to take these rows and still sum up these titles, right? Because in one row we have four tournaments, and we need to get all that information in somehow. 
So what we're going to do is we can check whether they won a certain tournament by checking whether the player ID is the value of that field. And if we're using player ID, it works for each player. It's not a hard-coded value. We're not just checking Nadal and player ID 1, but player ID could be 1 or 2 or 3 in this case. So let's just show you what I mean by using that example. So if we say player ID is Wimbledon, that is going to evaluate to 1 if that is true and to 0 if that is false. And if that is true, that means that player won that tournament. So if we take the sum of that, whenever that happened, we count all Wimbledon victories for each player. To do that for each player and not confuse wins between players, we're going to group by player ID as well. So let's see what this gives us. This gives us 2 and 1. So let's select player ID as well to see which player is actually behind these. And it's going to say player ID 1 won 2 Wimbledons and 2 won 1 Wimbledon. That's like a hard sentence to say. But as we can see, we have Wimbledon two ones in here, which means player ID 1 won it twice, and then 1-2 in here, which means player ID 2 won it once. It's going to become more clear if I just add the player name here as well. So I'm going to have Nadal has two victories, Federer has one in Wimbledon which is nice, yeah. We're, we're pretty far already. So let's just do the same for all the other tournaments and sum them up. Sum up the sums of each tournament's victory. So here we're gonna take a look at the other column being French Open, the other tournament, and do that for pretty much all tournaments. So let's just copy paste that twice and make that US Open. And Australian Open and call that entire thing Grand Slams count since that's what we should call it for the output and let's run that. Mm. See if I've got a plus in here when I copy paste it. That should do the trick and that is accepted. Okay, sorry, my camera actually died, so I'm recording from my phone, but that's pretty much it for that problem already. So to sum it up, we're joining players on championships using a victory in either of these tournaments. That's our join condition. And then we're summing up the number of victories by comparing player ID and the actual value in the field. And sum is just going to evaluate how many of these conditions are true and sum that up works quite nicely because true evaluates to 1 and false to 0 and that's how we're going to come up with the entire Grand Slams count for all of these years. If you want to study some more I have lead code database problem playlists on the channel for easy, medium and hard difficulty so you can go through each of these difficulty sections one by one or you can look at the entire playlist which just contains all lead code SQL database video solutions that I made. Also make sure to subscribe to get these videos in your sub feed and get a reminder to keep studying when you're browsing YouTube. I think that could be quite helpful if you want to continue studying and crack these analytical interviews. And I hope I'll see you all in the next video. Until then.